Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt over here at Primal, coming to you today with another video on my favorite throwing event, the discus. Now if you checked out our previous videos, I want to just say a quick thank you. Keep the comments and keep the emails coming in. Love hearing from you guys of what you think of the videos. We also want to hear any specific questions or problems that you might be having with your throws that I can answer during these videos. Now if you checked out our last discus video, we talked about how you know to properly set the feet, how far apart, how close together your feet need to be, what feels best for you. We also talked about how to get set in the back of the circle so that you're not doing a crazy warm-up routine back and forth for five minutes before you throw. And we showed you how to make sure that you're properly all the way back with the discus so that the shoulder is right down the middle of your body. Today now we're going to talk about shifting the weight onto that left leg and swinging that leg out to get a good drive down the middle of that circle. And what we're going to do, if you've watched our old videos, what we've told you before is that the upper body is never slow. The upper body never drags. The upper body is fast. The lower body is just faster. So the upper body and the lower body are always in a race against each other. What well, we're going to start to teach you, like we did with the shot put, is we're going to teach you how to cheat a little bit. Not only are we going to teach you how to give the lower body a little bit more of a head start as you go through the full throw, but we're also going to show you how to make their distance a little bit shorter. So the lower body is going to be cheating. The lower body is going to be moving uh, with more of a head start, and it's going to be moving a shorter distance. And by doing that, we ensure that the upper body is always staying back, and we ensure that there's a proper amount of torque and a proper amount of pull on that throwing arm to get the optimal amount of distance and the optimal amount of push when you finish your throw. Let me show you how this begins. So just like the last video, we've got our feet a decent distance apart, comfortable. We're not too close that we're off balance, and we're not too far apart that we can't shift our weight. Nice athletic position, a little bit wider than shoulder width apart both toes pointing forward. The discus is back, our knees are bent, and the shoulder is right in the middle of our knees. So basically we started here, and we came back. Now from this position, you have to time it right so that as soon as the discus gets back, we are going to open the knee and turn the foot. And let me show you what happens. As you open the knee and turn the foot, check out the stopwatch, the weight starts to shift over your left side. Now why is this so important? Okay. There's two things you have to watch out for. Number one, the knee has to be bent. Number two, the weight has to shift. What you're going to do eventually is you're going to drive down the middle of that circle. And in order to drive down the middle of the circle, you have to make sure that you have a bent knee to push off of and that you have the weight over that side to allow you the balance to push off of that leg. It would be like if you tried to walk without shifting the weight over one foot. If you ever tried to walk without shifting weight, you know it can't happen. You can't physically take a step. If you ever tried to jump with your knees completely locked out, you're not going to get that high because your knees are not bent. So when you're in the back of the circle, you have to make sure that the knees are bent, okay? and you have to make sure that not only are the knees bent, but the weight starts to shift. So as we open the foot and as we open the knee, the weight starts to shift over the left side. Notice that my shoulder is still right in the middle of my body, right in the middle of my legs. So my shoulder has not caught up, and it's not beating the lower body. The lower body, we're cheating by giving it a head start. Once the weight is shifted, and once the knee is open, now we have to start talking about swinging the leg out to prepare for that drive down the middle of the circle. Now this is where we're going to cheat even more and we're going to give the lower body a little bit shorter of a distance compared to the upper body. So not only is the lower body getting a head start, 
The lower body is also going to have a much shorter distance to go. This is going to ensure that the lower body is always winning that race against the upper body. Let me show you what I mean. In the back of the circle, the way that most throws coaches will teach their athletes is they will have the athlete turn out of the back of the circle and face the entire body, face right down the middle of that circle. And it looks like this. They'll start out in the back and they'll turn all the way. As you can see, when I do that, both of my feet are pointed right down the middle of that circle. My shoulders are down the middle of the circle. My hips are down the middle of the circle. What we're going to do, and what all advanced discus throwers do, is we're going to cut about 10% off of that motion. So instead of facing our entire body, our feet, our knees, our hips, our shoulders, all the way down the middle, we're going to cut it back a little bit. And now we're going to be facing the left side of the body down the middle of that circle. So instead of this, it now looks like this. As you can see, by doing that, we are cutting a good quarter of a second. We're cutting about 10 to 20 percent off the distance that our body's going to move. So let me show you one more time. This is very, very important. Instead of the regular way, the way that most coaches teach by doing this, we're going to do this. Now if you go back and listen, listen for my right foot hitting the ground. Instead of this, it's this. It takes about a tenth of a second, a twentieth of a second off of that movement. And in a sport like the track and field, in a sport like the discus, that little tenth of a second, little twentieth of a second off the throw could mean an extra foot or two onto the end of your throw. Alright guys, thanks so much for checking out the video today. Take these tips with you out to the circle and improve your throws as soon as possible. Outdoor track signups just happened here in Rhode Island. Uh, I think the outdoor season starts in about two weeks. So believe it or not, it's pretty cold outside. There's still snow on the ground, but track and field is right around the corner. Thank you guys for checking out the videos again. Please subscribe to this channel. In the next video, we're going to talk about actually driving down the middle of that circle. And we're going to show you a few more ways to cheat and to give that lower body a big advantage over that upper body. We hope that you guys check in. Keep those comments and emails coming. Thanks.